perhaps higher perceived probability we get some kind of soft landing that maybe uh, recession isn't a foregone conclusion or at least that earnings are going to hold up. You seem as if you're a little skeptical of that view. You think that we still have uh, a little bit of a tough road ahead economically? We are. I mean, you know, look, there's just too many supply dislocations that the Fed just can't control, which are going to keep a little bit of a bit under inflation. And so, you know, can they get inflation down from eight to, you know, four or five percent? Sure. But if they're pretty resolute on getting it down to two, they're going to have to go into a much more restrictive territory than the market is currently pricing. And that's the part that we think is underappreciated. Once that flows through to multiples, um, especially on earnings that should decline as those rate hikes make their way through the economy, it's just going to be a tough time, you know, going anywhere down. I wonder how what we might hear over the next couple of days from uh, Jay Powell in Jackson Hole is going to affect that, because there's some sense out there that as soon as we have a couple of months of declining inflation, given already what's been done on the tightening side, the lagged effect uh, of that on the economy, maybe there's a sense out there that some uh, equilibrium point might be not too far in the future. Yeah, look, I think all of our work suggests that wages tend to lead other types of inflation, and especially the stickier types of inflation. And so if you've still got wages growing, you know, well into the 5 percent range, that's the tricky part for the Fed right now is that will eventually put upward pressure on things like rent and those stickier components of inflation, even if the headline comes down. All right, let's get to SoFi. That stock getting a pop today. It's off its highs, but still up more than 3 percent. President Biden announcing last hour the federal government is canceling $10,000 in student debt for some borrowers, likely to affect some 40 million loans in total. Joining us now for more is Mizuho's Dan Dolib, covers SoFi. Dan, uh, first just talk about the, the general implications of this move in conjunction with the fact that the moratorium on paying interest on student loans is going to end at the end of this year. How does that run up against SoFi's business? Hey, Mike, thanks for having me on the show. Look, this, this has been a huge drag on the stock, and we're so happy to see that drag go away because it kept, you know, for the last two years, we've been hearing, you know, it keeps getting extended, extended, extended. And what, what ends up happening is when, you know, there's finally clarity about this, then you're going to get um, you know, a big wave of refinancing, and that's how SoFi makes money, right? In 2019, it accounted for about 60% of volume, 60. It's down to 20% now in the first half. So if you get that, it's a refinancing boom again. Now that you have that, you know, the moratorium clarity uh, ending, uh, I think it's going to be great for SoFi. So that, that's how it kind of plays into the SoFi story. So the elimination of student loan balances based on the forgiveness of this $10,000 is not going to offset that at all? In other words, people won't have as many uh, as loan balances to refinance if that happens. It's only about, I think, about 50 percent. So remember, there's a, the, the benchmark is 125,000. So it's only about 50 percent or so of their book is below 125,000 of, of income. And the average loan balance is about 70,000. So you still need to refinance your remaining loans, plus the people that have uh, higher incomes now have clarity that they're not going to get a pass anymore. And that might create them to basically stop you know, kicking the can down the road and refinance again. We've seen this in the fourth quarter of uh, last year, when people thought mm -hmm. that the moratorium was going to end, you saw a huge boom in refinancing. I expect to see the same thing in the fourth quarter. It's happening sooner and it's happening bigger than what we thought before. And that's why we're saying, you know, Biden is forgiving. Don't forget to buy SoFi. And then just bottom line, clearly that's not the only driver of SoFi's business. But how else is it situated? Here we are with about a $6 billion market cap on the company right now. It's, it's well down from, you know, the, the highs of a year and a half ago or something like that. As people rethink maybe, you know, the model and what to pay for it and whether profitability is going to be nearby. I think this is a great time for SoFi because, remember, in an environment where interest rates are rising, SoFi is a huge advantage. They're lending like a bank, right? They're lending with their own balance sheet, and they get a better cost of capital. So they can make a bigger spread when others are having trouble, right? We're, we've been in this environment where lending is, is, is a problem. But SoFi, because it's got the cachet of the fintech, it's got a huge brand and you know, great management, and it lends like a bank, it's got sort of the best of both worlds or the best of all worlds. And, you know, we're getting more and more calls from investors who are interested in SoFi these days because it's very, very uniquely positioned. Plus, there's more liquidity with SoftBank selling. So it's sort of like that perfect environment or mm. perfect weather for, for people to get back into SoFi. Well, we'll see if, uh, if fintech is still something that has cachet, I guess, uh, over time. But, uh, Samir, let me just ask you quickly, in terms of the macro implications, if any, of the student loan forgiveness, some people say it might drive more consumer inflation, others that are just refresh, you know, household balance sheets. Is, is there really uh, a play in this from the macro side? 
You know, it probably does, you know, kind of put a little bit of, you know, confidence back in the, in the consumer's mindset, right? I mean, there's been a lot of things that have kind of weighed on it, whether it be, you know, wages, whether it be gas prices. I mean, this is definitely something that should ease some of the pressure on the lower end of the consumption, you know, brackets. And if anything, you know, it, it feeds back into that conversation from earlier about making the Fed's job a little bit harder because now you're, you're getting consumers feeling better again. Right. Yeah, there is a push-pull for sure. Uh, uh, Dan, and thank you very much. We'll, uh, we'll catch you again soon.